Uh, welcome, and this video is going to be on the Enthalpy Lab, uh, the conclusions and the calculations that go along with the Enthalpy Lab. Anyway, the purpose of this lab is going to be to write four balanced chemical equations and include a delta H at the end of it. Now, you've done problems like this before. The problems that you've already done that are similar to this are the three-step problems. Uh, step number one, in those problems that you did, you had to convert to moles. And then step number two, you did Q equals MC delta T. And this second part had to do with water. And then whatever you got for Q, delta H was the opposite value. And then step number three, we just took delta H and we divided it by our moles. And that was our step three. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing in these three problems, or these four problems that went along with our lab. All right. There'll be a couple of catches as you go, but I'm going to walk you through those and you can pause this video or do what you need to do to help you get these conclusions down. Your conclusion is just going to be this. Your conclusion is just going to be four equations filled out with a delta H right here beside them. So the conclusion part's not going to be too bad, and you're not going to have to do a percent error or anything based on this delta H because, to be honest, this lab is actually really hard to get good results in. I mean, in theory, we'd need to get everybody's results for the lab, and, and still, we got some gray areas where we're kind of cheating here in this lab. Now, this first lab y'all did, y'all took five grams of iron, and you reacted that five grams with 30 milliliters of one molar acid is what you did in that lab. Now, believe it or not, now this is the equation. You can go ahead and copy it down. I've got it. Fe, HCl, FCl2, H2. And I've already put little phase labels in here just to give you a hand because you do need to do those technically. Now, the only thing in here that looks new to y'all is this 30 milliliters of one molar, HCl. And I'm actually going to help you out with this one. Step number one in this one is going to be easy. Believe it or not, I don't know if you noticed it, but the iron was actually in this lab, the iron that y'all used was the, uh, that was your excess. I don't know if you noticed it, but the iron was an excess. So it means what we're really interested in is this LR over here in the lab. So what we're going to do is this. You haven't done this before, but I'm just going to do it in the calculator. You don't know what that big M stands for, but it tells you how strong the acid is. This will be a uh, test after next. We'll be doing molarity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the moles on this first one for you. So the moles on this first one is 0 .030, which is my 30 milliliters. So 0 .030 times 1. Well, that makes this one kind of easy. Your moles on this first one is 0 .03 moles. So there's your moles on this first one. For step number two, you're going to do Q equals MC delta T on this one. And your mass is going to be, your mass on the first one, The I'm just going to go ahead, that acid was so weak, we're just going to go ahead and say that you had 30 grams of water times 4.186 times your two temperatures. After you get that, you'll do your delta H over moles. Don't forget, whatever you get for Q, delta H needs to be the opposite on that. All right, so that's number one. So here's the, and in the end, this is the big thing. Really, y'all need to do this lab. All you need from me is you need to know your moles, and you need to know, or you need to know either your moles or grams, and man, I'm messing this up, but that's okay. I'm not going to restart the video. The only thing on this first one, and this is the two most important numbers, this is all you need from me on the first one. There's your moles, and you need to know that 30 grams from me. That's all you need. You need to fill in these temperatures. This is your temperature final and your temperature initial. And you need to pick the two temperatures. If you've got a bunch of temperatures, 
You need to pick the two temperatures that will give you the greatest change in this. And pay attention to your pluses or minuses. Uh, matter of fact, every one of these reactions is exothermic except for one of them. All right. How about on the next one? HCl plus NaOH. Let's finish that equation. You're going to end up with H2O, which is a liquid, plus we're going to also end up with NaCl, which is going to be dissolved in water, and then semicolon delta H. And again, what you're trying to do is get that delta H on the very end of it. All right, on this last one, I kind of picked my numbers for a reason again. This next one, you've got 30 milliliters of one molar HCl. And we're going to actually use this to be our Lemington reactant. And this is the, ne this is the neat thing. Step number one is already 0 0.03 moles again. So there's your step number one. I'm giving you that. Step number two is going to be Q equals MC delta T. And the thing you need from me is this. We're going to use a mass of 60 grams for water on the second one times 4.186 times your two temperatures. So all you need from me on number two is you need to know that your moles is 0 0.03 and I want you to use 60 grams for your mass of water on that one. All right, so let's move on to the last two. So that's all you needed from me on those two. Next one, the H2O2, the one with the yeast. Now, this is what's kind of neat. The yeast actually does not have anything to do with the reaction. The yeast helped H2O2 peroxide do what it wanted to do. Peroxide wants to break down into water, and oxygen gas. We'll sit here and put a G delta H equals. This is your equation, and I do to balance it. All I got to do is put a one half in front of that O2, and I've got the equation balance. Ooh, I forgot my semicolon. Semicolon. But there's the equation for this first one. Now I'm going to have to do some little trickerations in this first one. I'm going to end up giving you a mass for that H2O2. Uh, let's see, 30 times 0 0.03. All right, I'm going to say this is going to be for this one. Step number one, I'm going to say that you had 0.9 grams of H2O2. So out of all that liquid, I'm going to say you had 0.9 grams of actual H2O2. So for this one, start with 0.9 grams of H2O2. And you need to actually convert this one to moles. I don't have that one for you. Step number two, I want you to do Q equals MC delta T again. And then the only thing you need from me is what you're going to use for mass on this one. For this one on mass, we're going to use, uh, let's go with this. For this one, let's go with 29.1 grams for our mass of water. Because 0.9 grams of the weight is going to be H2O2, and we should have started with 30. And then we can times 4.186 times your two temperatures. Again, get the two temperatures that give you the greatest change when you go to do your TF minus TI. Don't forget when you get to the end, get your delta H and then do your delta H divided by your moles. Don't forget whatever Q is, delta H is the opposite sign. I'll go and tell you for this one right here, delta H is going to end up being, delta H for this one is going to be negative. This should be an exo, oops, this should be an exothermic reaction is what it ought to be. All right. Let's move on to the last one. So again, the two things you need from me on this one, you needed that 0.9 grams to get your moles, and then you needed this 29.1 grams for your MC delta T down here. Last one, y'all had 5 grams of NH4 and O3 and 75 milliliters of water. And step number one, you need to get the 5 grams of NH4NO3 ammonium nitrate. You need to convert that to moles. 
So step number one, convert your five grams to moles. Step number two, this was actually the only one that really made great sense to do in the whole lab. MC delta T, your water should have been 75 grams because you used 75 milliliters, 4.186 times your two T's, TF minus TI. Anyway, again, the only thing you need from me, you need to know that 5 grams and the 75 grams. So that is everything you need to do the lab. So your conclusion, all I want your conclusion to be, oops, we didn't finish this equation. When you dissolve NH4 and O3, you get NH4 plus 1, AQ plus NO3, negative 1, AQ, semicolon, delta H equals. So anyway, all I want for a conclusion, and you can go back and rewatch this video again, I want this equation with the delta H. This equation, the delta H, this equation, delta H, get there eventually, and then this equation with the delta H. So four equations record their enthalpy in terms of sources of error that you might use in doing your calculation for the lab. Uh, in terms of sources of error, I mean, a couple little things, the little stir. The stir would actually absorb some heat, so you could talk about that. If you lost any of the liquid, you could account for that in there as well. Uh, the styrofoam actually is a really good insulator, so that part wouldn't be quite such a big deal. But anyway, uh, we don't have any percent errors or anything, so that's what makes the source of error hard. You really don't know if you did your answer right. Uh, hey, I just remember one thing. Don't forget, when you finish, convert all your answers into kilojoules, though, when you're done. And most of your answers should be somewhere in, like, the hundreds of kilojoules, something like that. Uh, that would be my estimate. But anyway, y'all good luck with this. If you got any questions, ask me later. Don't forget to get your procedures signed off when you finish this lab. As for me, I will catch you guys later. Uh, love you, I guess. Anyway, bye.